All right, what's going on, guys? I'm sure uh, this place has got to love me coming here as often as I do. Always bringing them uh, the number of cars that we do every time I'm here. They're getting five today. Um, another 10 car load. This one was uh, extremely easy because I had a lot of sportages and they're small and I can get them down to height very easy. But uh, all the salesmen are standing over there looking at these cars, so I'm going to get them off real quick here. But uh, I'll show you what we got going on. It's the normal Sportage on one, K5, Sportage, K5. We got Sportage, Sportage, Sorrento, Sorrento, Sportage, Sportage. So the reason I really like these Sportages is when it comes to the space right here, I can really shrink these two up a lot by pulling this back like this bar right here that you see the little coming off from the side of the trailer that's normally about if i had like all sorrentos up here um that would be about where the end of this the blue is on the trailer right here so by having the extra sportages up there i can really put this one much further back and then i can uh, slide this one way back which really helps to get down to height obviously we made it up here safely like we always do, but uh, this one here, in order to get these all on, I had to put these two K5s right here. As you know, I still have not tried going, uh, putting Sportage, backing the other Sportage on right here, and pulling one in underneath. I'm going to try that one of these days when I have a little bit of extra time. I'm pretty sure it'll work, but I just want to make sure I can get it down. But this one has to go here, so I'm gonna. I have to unload these bottom three. These actually, these four, all go here, and then I got to take these two off in order to get this one off. These go to my next stop up in Parkersburg. But I will set you guys up so you guys can see uh, this thing get offloaded, and we're gonna go try to make some money. And I'll explain to you uh, what happened this week because obviously, if you can't tell, my voice is a little shot right now. Um, I ended up being sick on Tuesday, which was weird because Monday took the truck in for a oil change DOT and I thought the AC just needed to be recharged, but apparently the AC pump had gone bad or the compressor. So that uh, delayed things a little bit and boy, did they find something that was real expensive. So we'll get into that. Um, feel bad for United Road having to pay for it, but man, if you're going to own these kind of trucks, that's kind of the crap we got to deal with. Uh, sometimes those surprise bills come up, and I will show you guys what that is because, boy, was it a lot more than I thought it was going to be. I'll see you all in a second. Let's get this offloaded.
So we just got up here to, uh, uh, what is this? Uh, la, 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 the Mannheim up here in Cranberry, Pennsylvania. We're going to be loading up eight units here. Uh, I got two pickup trucks and a whole bunch of, I think, uh, standard SUVs. They're fairly easy load. I'm not going to uh, stress about this one all that much because there's no real point in doing it. But what I wanted to get into is really what happened um, over the weekend here. I needed, I was told at the end of last week to get my truck in for an oil change, normal stuff. Um, I got a truck stop that's not too far from my house that uh, I run in and, and let them do it. I get home, do everything with my family, and then uh, usually first thing in the morning, like 4 o'clock in the morning, I call them, and uh, on Monday before I leave out, set an appointment. If I can get in right away, awesome, I go right down. If not, I go back to bed for a couple hours. But it keeps me from having to uh, run three, four hours to any of our uh, service locations. So... It was a fairly simple uh, thing that needed to happen. It was a oil change and uh, DOT inspection on truck and trailer. Fairly basic uh, oil change came to like $288. Um, Plus 16 for Packard's one use plug. And a Rotella charge of $5. I have no idea what that is. Um, standard oil change. And uh, the. Oh, okay. So the, the entire thing with the DOT and oil change is $421.99. Nothing too bad there. Uh, the AC had been hit or miss for a couple weeks prior, but it's been cool. So I've been just kind of pushing through. Uh, I mean, when it's 70, I'll just open the window up a little bit and drive like that. I was in Texas. The AC never really gave me any major fits. It, it kind of would be hit or miss first thing in the morning, and then it would run all afternoon fine. So, not, not anything major. I wasn't going to take the time off to worry about that, um, knowing that I had a uh, oil change coming up here in the next week or two. If it would have been 90 degrees, then yeah, I, I would have uh, gotten a change. But it seemed like every time it got real, real hot out, AC worked fine. I figured it was kind of probably getting low on uh, Freon, just needed to be topped off no big deal this is we're getting into our third summer and you, you guys know as well as i do how often we use these air conditioners they, they they tend to just need a little bit of maintenance every year or two so like i said wasn't worried about that um but it ended up being a bit more than a 75 dollar charge to put free on in your vehicle it ended up needing the Freon drained, a AC compressor, and the uh, AC dryer. All of that right about, uh, what did that come to? $705 for the compressor. Um, the labor was a half hour, which I don't see any charge in here for that. Um, $121 for the dryer, and the drive to tri it was $104. So that came to roughly seven, eight, nine, so right about a thousand bucks just for the air conditioning system. That, that's a pretty big nut to crack, if you ask me, that if you're not expecting it, if, if you're if you go into one of these shops, and this is my whole thing here, is if you're planning on owning these trucks, you, you got to understand that you, you have to have ten, fifteen thousand dollars 
in a service account at all times. And if you don't, you're, you're just playing Russian roulette. Because this is something that I personally would have gone into the shop expecting a $500 bill. And right now we're already at nearly $1,500 for just two of the issues. Um, so after that, there's a bunch of little minor stuff. Uh, Freon was 56 bucks. Freon recovered. They subtracted $44 from that. Uh, the uh, oil for oh, so so they compressed it, put the oil in there, thirty-four dollars. Wiper blades, fifteen bucks. You get those changed when we do oil changes, um, especially if you're driving in a lot of rain. If they're if they're fine, I don't have them do it, but normally, I I'd say probably every oil change, every other oil change, I'm putting wipers on my truck. Um. Then we had okay. So then we got into what they found during the DOT, which was pretty extensive um, issue. It ended up being a one of the tensioner pulleys had gone bad, and. Very, very, very recently, it had gone bad, and I'm I'm saying probably over the weekend, it had finally let go, and then I just drove it one mile to the uh, truck stop to have it uh, fixed. That, in and of itself, what ended up happening was the idler pulley had... Man, this is, it makes my hands look shiny, this light. I don't, I don't know. I wonder if I can correct that. Hang on. We're going to... Is that any better? Nope. Okay, so we're back. And I think I got everything fixed so I'm not looking holographic. I don't know what just what happened with my uh, recording app. I'm sorry about that. Um, but where do we leave off here? So the uh, tensioner pulley ended up, like, it, it normally sits on the front of the motor, obviously, but it kicked sideways. And it ended up pulling the belt off, almost off of the pulleys on the uh, front of the motor. That's a very, very, very big uh, issue because if that comes off completely, you are going to take that belt and you're going to fling it around and it will just destroy the whole uh, front cover of your motor. And that's, that's a very big bill, much bigger than this one here. So they ended up having to replace the belt, obviously. Uh, that was $111.29. Uh, they replaced the 8 rib belt. That was 110 They replaced the 10 rib belt. That was $168. Um, the tensioner secondary pulley, uh, which is $401. Then the tensioner V belt pulley is another $401. Uh, they, United Road had a next day air freighted in. There's two hundred and sixty dollars. Uh, environmental fees thirty bucks. I think that's going to knock it up a little bit. And then another four hundred dollars, um, in labor to do that job. So this entire bill. For what, if you are an owner-operator or you're considering getting into this industry, this entire bill right here, this this would have been a bit of a shocker. Total parts, $2,091. Labor, $1,242. 
and then the oil, $251. Um, came to a grand total of $3,934.48, for which you would have expected showing up for your oil change. You would have inspe- expected DOT oil free on $500 bill. That, that's what I would have gone in. $500, $550. They would have come at me at $650. I would have been shocked, but would have been okay. I mean, you, you got to pay it anyways. You got need the truck. You need to get back on the road. This simple little DOT inspection, $4,000 bill. That's insane. This is not a cheap industry to be in. I, I, I feel bad. I mean, I don't have to pay this, but all of this kind of stuff, I mean, it, it comes out of me getting a raise, so it, it effectively I am paying for this bill as well, just like every other driver that's out there. This isn't, again, this isn't a cheap industry. And and like I said, you, you got to have $15,000 um, minimum breakdown budget. Because uh, that, that's going to at least get you parts and into a rebuild on a motor. It's going to get you the trans, uh, transmission. It's going to get you rear ends. It's going to get you tires, it's brakes, all that stuff. It, it can get you by having that money there. You're going to have the ability to, uh, to do that stuff without parking the truck and waiting. Um, and so that, that's kind of why I say the $15,000 is really the bare bones minimum you have to have in order to operate one of these trucks. Otherwise, like I said, you're playing Russian roulette. Uh, you're, you're one breakdown away from just shutting your doors. And that's scary. And you got to think, this truck has been on the road, what now? Three, four weeks maybe? Maybe a month? Um, we've been back in this road after just walking away from a $12,000 uh, DPF system bill. Um, I don't remember, I, I don't have the paperwork with me anymore, um, what that all entailed. Yes, a lot of that was warranted, not all of it, but if you buy a three-year-old truck, you're, you're looking dead on at a $12,000, $13,000 death system uh, issue all day long. It, it, it doesn't take very much to, to rack that kind of a bill up. And you got to think that's after they've already had this truck in. So they paid $12,000 or the, they would have, if you, if you would have had to pay, it wasn't under warranty. You would have had to pay $12,000 directly after paying for all those tow bills that this truck ran into. And the four other times this thing went into the shop, I don't know what those bills were. I never I never got paperwork on that. Um, the shop that they were going to, they just emailed them over to our, uh, our maintenance department. So I, I never saw the bills on those. I just grabbed keys and left. And I'm, I'm assuming those are a few thousand dollars every time you went in. So you got to figure this truck right here, the one that I missed, if this was a three-year-old truck without a warranty, so far this year, not including the amount of downtime that this truck would have incurred or had incurred. Luckily, working here, I get a spare truck, jump right in another truck, keep making money. Doesn't really cost me much, but a day on either end between getting the truck, or having the breakdown, getting it to a shop, getting to my next truck, and we're talking like a day, day and a half on either end, and then re- returning the truck another day, day and a half to get back to my truck again. So for me personally, it's not costing me a fortune, but you got to figure these trucks alone. Or this truck alone. What you guys have personally seen happen to me out here through these videos. I bet you this truck is 
fairly easily today sitting at a maintenance nightmare of probably around thirty to thirty five thousand dollars we're five months into the year five months into the year we're at probably thirty thirty five thousand dollars I would have been out of your pocket just in breakdown payments then you gotta account for the $1,500 a day it cost you this truck not being on the road. Um, the very first time, it was like eight or nine days. So you figure at eight days, at $1,500 a day, that's $8,000 plus $4,000, there's $12,000. It just cost you. The next time, it was down for exactly a week. I literally dropped it off on a Monday, picked it up next week, Monday. Um, so we'll just say... Another seven days of lost income out of this truck. So we're, we were at, what, 12000 plus another 7000 So you're now at 19000 plus the $500, which would be 3500 bucks. So 19, 22500 The next time it went down, it was exactly a week again. So you're at another... 7,000, so now we're at 30,500 plus another 3,500, so we're at 34,000. Um, and then the last big breakdown it had, um, which was that big $12,000 bill, that was down two weeks. The truck was just flat down to, then I think I'm forgetting one here, but we'll just go with two weeks, 14 days. There's $14,000 that you lost. Plus another seven, so twenty-one thousand. So you're at fifty-six thousand dollars in lost income, on top of the thirty to thirty-five thousand you had to pay out. So think about that for just a split second. In five months, in five months, this truck could have bankrupted a one-truck company. You're talking eighty-five thousand dollars in lost revenue. And actual dollars you have to physically take out of your bank account in five months. Think about that. If, if you're going to get into this industry, think about the amount of money you are going to have to hold on to before you can really even start, I guess, taking a paycheck. Because, uh, I mean, $85,000, that, that's more than what you're going to profit in a year. You figure between fuel and payroll and all that kind of stuff, you literally just wrote off an entire year's profit. Because if you think about the profitability of a trucking company, you got to think about it in fours. You have payroll, 25% of what it costs you to run your company. You have fuel, 25% of what it costs you to run your company. You have maintenance, taxes, miscellaneous bills and expenses, all that kind of stuff. 25% of, uh, we'll go this way, 25% of what it costs you to run your company. And then number four, that last, uh, that last 25% is supposed to be profit. Most of these trucks make three hundred and fifty dollars to $400,000 a year. So you'd have to think, if you were killing it out here and you put four hundred grand on the ground in a year, you made $15,000 this year. 85% of your profit is gone in five months. That, that's not including all the other things that are still going to go on with this truck this year. Hopefully no breakdowns, but you figure this truck just cost you an entire year. Think about that. Um, that, that's kind of what you have to think of when it comes to these things. But guys, for real, uh, for real, I just said that. I haven't said that since like <laughs> ninth grade. Um, so <laughs> realistically, guys, that's kind of what you have to expect. You have to plan for these things. Um, but I'm going to jump off here. I'm going to go load these cars up and start making my way back down to Bristol today. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I am going to turn around and try to make some money and try to get back on the road. So, guys, as always, down below, if you want to join United Road, click on that link. Use me as your reference. All my information is down below. If you got any questions, shoot them over to me in email form or down in, uh, in the comments of these videos. I get back to everybody. So, guys, I appreciate it. I love you guys watching, and uh, I'm screwing this up horribly. I'm just going to get out of here. So, bye. Catch you later.